Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. My name is Greg. Uh, it's April 13th, 2020, and we're still stuck indoors uh, to a greater or lesser degree. I'm sure the, the same is true for some of you if you're watching this uh, in the next couple of days or weeks. Uh, but anyway, it does look like I'm going back to work, back to my regular job in just a few days. Um, telework is officially over for me. Um, and actually, even today, I'm not on telework. I'm, I'm burning a leave day. So, And I, I happened to uh, receive a package in the mail today. So I thought, won't this be a great opportunity to do a short unboxing video? Or at least that's what I'm calling it down there because that catches people's eye. But... Obviously, there's no box. This is just an envelope. Um, what's in here is a watch strap. Uh, I'm hoping it's a pretty cool watch strap. I've been looking for uh, a strap like this for a while, and uh, I thought I'd give you guys an opportunity to see it as I see it for the first time. Um, and the type of watch strap it is, is a Bund watch strap. Um, most of you are probably familiar with the concept of the Bund strap. For those of you who may not be, a bund strap is uh, its sort of a generic term. There's several different styles, but the general idea is that the strap itself is wider than the case lugs on the uh, wristwatch case. And so it actually covers the entire back of the watch. Sometimes the strap itself is even wider than the entire watch case, but it's wider than the lugs, and then it uses separate little loops or straps to attach the uh, the watch to the strap um, and there's evidence that bun straps date all the way back to world war one maybe i've seen some very early wrist watches mounted on bun straps but they became particularly popular as sort of a fashion accessory in the late 1960s and early 1970s and there are tons of um really classic photos of iconic characters from that time period uh, from Hollywood, uh, from the world of automotive racing. Now this is where I would normally uh, put up some of those classic photos right here, but I wasn't able to locate a single one that was labeled for even non-commercial reuse. So I, although the channel's been growing slowly and steadily over two years, the last thing in the world I want is a copyright strike. So you're going to have to use your own Google foo to go and find those photos if you want to see them. Uh, but you can find pictures of Paul Newman wearing his Daytona on a bun strap. You can find uh, photos of Steve McQueen wearing a watch on a bun strap. Robert Redford wore his Doxa shark hunter i believe on a bun strap in three days of the condor um fashion and auto racing icon nina rent uh oftentimes wore a racing chronograph on a bund strap uh, i think that was a zenith if i recall correctly if i'm wrong go ahead and correct me down below so anyway um i've always enjoyed the sort of funky 1960s 1970s design aesthetic so i've been looking for a decent bun strap for a while and I specifically been looking for a, um, a, a strap to put my uh, 1963 uh, reissue uh, from Seagull the uh, Air Force the Chinese Air Force chronograph on I know it's not a racing chronograph it's more of a military slash aviation chronograph but I I think it's going to look cool on a bun strap anyway um Bun straps are kind of weird. There's a lot of them available on eBay and Amazon and other places. Most of them are coming out of China. And I don't have a problem with Chinese watch straps. I've had really good success with certain Chinese watch straps from companies like Watchy. Um, I, I have a couple videos up already. The problem with the Chinese bun straps that you find on eBay and Amazon is that most of them don't look like serious watch straps. They look like props to complete some sort of a steampunk role-playing costume rather than a serious watch strap. So I looked and looked and looked and finally I happened upon Fluco. Uh, Fluco is a German manufacturer. They're located in the town of Firth Imwald in Germany. That's Firth, F-U-R-T-H, Imwald, which Imwald literally translated from German means in the forest. 
And Firthimwald is in fact in the Black Forest region of Bavaria in Germany, uh, very close to the uh, Czech border. So if you go to Nuremberg, Germany, and uh, draw a line straight east, or what, do I have that backwards? Anyway, draw a line straight east to Pilsen in the Czech Republic, just about midway in between there, and, and just a tiny bit south, you'll find Firth involved on the map. And uh, as I said, just on the Czech border. So the family, it's a family owned company. Um, they do have, there's very little information about Fluco online. Um, they do have a really beautifully designed German language website. Uh, I think that's fluco.de. But again, it's, it's all in German. And my German is crap. Um, and they don't have an English uh, language version of the website. So I, and they also have one of those weird websites where you can't copy and paste stuff off of it their security settings or whatever. So I was unable to translate it into English, but from looking around there, I got a little bit of information off of it. Um, they're running the company out of a fairly small factory. All the watch straps are supposed to be handmade. Uh, as I think I mentioned already, it's a family owned company. It's owned by a family called Fleischmann. Uh, and they've been in business since, it looks like they've been in business since 1949. I've seen some other references uh, that show them having been in business since 1952, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. It's a family-owned company. They're German, they're handmade, and they've been in business for well over 60 years at this point. So um, anyway, I've probably blathered on long enough. I know that drives some of you crazy. So let's go over to the tabletop and take a look at what's inside this package. All right, guys, so here is the package. Um, I did order this uh, directly from Amazon, or at least I thought I was getting it directly from Amazon, uh, but it seems to have come from Bainbridge Island, Washington, and from the address and this name, I think this is from Holbins uh, Fine Watch Bands. So they're a very well-regarded dealer in their own right, and apparently they are uh, a reseller uh, through or a, a, a subcontractor of Amazon's as well. So, and it's just in a padded uh, paper envelope and it has this sort of cryptic message up here. Please do not cut smiley face. Um, so now every time I've ever opened a paper envelope, I've pretty much had to cut it. So I don't know, maybe we're dealing with, I'm not much of a philosopher, maybe this is Schrodinger's watch band in here. It's existing in a quantum state of both existing and not existing at the same time. So anyway, I will uh, heed this warning and instead of cutting it, we'll rip the envelope open. Rip open this flap here to reveal an inner bag, and in fact it is from Holbins. There it is, and uh, yeah, boy, that is a wide, wide watch strap, I will say. That's nice, it comes with a little card from Holbins, and thanking us for our purchase, and please confirm suitability before fastening to your watch or wrist. Doing otherwise may void your return. Visit the marketplace where you purchase the item for further details. So, that's nice. I always like to get business cards uh, from companies. Good little research or uh, reference material there. And so here it is. And it has the, there's Firth involved on the tag. There's the address. Um, and there's the name and model number, the Vigo 133-05-18. So at first glance, it looks pretty darn nice. It's made of nice, substantial leather. Uh, it has wax sealed edges. Um, and it does in fact appear to be hand sewn the stitching appears to have been done by hand. Now this is the tan version. It comes in brown, a darker brown, 
And uh, I don't know, I'm going to have to see whether or not this tan grows on me. It's a little bit lighter than I was thinking. Um, I imagine it will wear in a bit though. Um, let's see what it looks like on the wrist. That is a wide strap. I've never had a Bund strap before, so um, we'll see how much I like it. It does have a very wide stainless steel buckle. The prong looks to just be folded out of stainless steel. Um, that's a little bit thin, but I've never had a problem with prongs giving loose. Uh, now, this is the 18 millimeter version. I got it specifically to match my uh, Chinese Air Force chronograph. It does look as though that will match up pretty well. So hopefully this watch will look pretty good on the strap. I'm not going to put it on right now. Um, I just wanted a first impression of the band. Uh, the little loops, the keeper loops that uh, hold the spring bars uh, to attach the watch to the strap are held in place with uh, stainless steel double-sided screws. And you can see there's three individual mounting holes in each of these positions. And that's to adjust the lengths of the loop to fit the size of the uh, watch case. So because I have absolutely no experience and I'm seeing this for the first time as all of you are, I don't really have a lot else to say about the watch, it, uh, the strap. It does look very nice. Um, it appears to be of good quality. There's two keepers. Um, the two keepers are made of fairly thin leather, um, but I think those will be okay. And again, it does seem to be hand-stitched. So, honestly, for $28 and change, I don't know how a German company can hand make a watch band of apparently very good quality uh, and turn a profit. But uh, thankfully Fluco is doing exactly that. So Okay, so I went ahead and attached the watch head to the strap um, or the strap to the watch head. I guess it all is just a matter of perspective. And I think it looks pretty good. Um, you could accommodate a slightly larger watch than this. Um, I moved this screw to the outermost hole, but I left this screw on the center hole. So a slightly larger watch could also fit on the strap, but you can see here a significantly smaller watch could also be mounted on this strap. I mean, tiny. I would think like a ladies, an old fashioned ladies watch would maybe fit in between these two innermost holes. Um, anyway, I think it looks pretty good. I'll just put it on quickly to see how it looks. And yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, my cat got a hold of me there, in case anyone's wondering, and probably there as well. Um, yeah, it might take a little bit of getting used to. It is very wide. It is quite comfortable. Um, so yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with it so far. Let me know what you guys think of it, and now we'll go wrap this up. So at first glance, the Fluco Vigo looks like a really cool watch strap. It looks to be of, of good quality. I imagine it is. It's made in Germany, uh, handmade by a family in Germany. Um, I'm anxious to get it onto my uh, Seagull 1963 reissue. I don't think I'll be doing a follow-up review specifically on the strap. But if you watch for the uh, follow-up video on the 1963 Seagull, it'll almost certainly be uh, featured in that video, and I will have had a chance to wear it a little bit and be able to give my thoughts on the Fluco Vigo. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Like, share, tell your friends. All those things go a long way to help keep me here on the air. And when I post new content to the channel, I hope to see each of you here then. Later, guys.